The final Stranger Things trailer for season four just dropped, number four of four, and holy cow did it go from zero to 100 so fast. One moment we were admiring Elle's wholesome diorama of Hopper's cabin she was making for a school project, and then boom, 30 seconds later, we were in the middle of a shootout in the buyer's living room and watching some sketchy kidnapping stuff go down in the desert, followed by a military raid on a secret Russian underground bunker, and then it ends with a shaved head 11 crashing and blowing up a helicopter. They really understood the assignment with this one, but along with all that juicy action, they also decided to bless us by dropping all the season four episode titles on us, and Oh my gosh, there is so much hidden in these. When I first saw them, I was actually surprised that they gave us this much information so soon. They did this in the past with season two and three as well, but even then, they never announced the last three episodes titles because they were just too spoilery. I don't know if that's a word. They would have just given too much away though. They wanted us to know everything. But another big thing that they do when they release the episode titles is they like to release some fake titles to throw us off and help prevent releasing too many spoilers. So I wanna sit down, go through all these titles and explain the secrets behind each of them and go over what we can expect from each one. Welcome back everyone, it's Michael and this is going to be my video on all the Stranger Things season four episode titles. We're going to be breaking these down and seeing what they mean and diving into what we can expect in each one. At the end of the video, we're going to be looking at which episodes are the fake decoys they planted this year. So make sure you watch until the end of the video. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. We've got a great community here that loves to talk about all the same things that you love to talk about. So be sure to go down and hit that red button to join the community. We're going to jump right into it because there's a lot to talk about. There is so much hidden in these titles. This lineup sounds so good and all this new season four info is just getting me so hyped. I was watching back the trailer earlier and I noticed a lot of tiny details that I'm sure a lot of people just missed due to it being so fast. A lot of the scenes were literally half a second long. So I was thinking about maybe making a video on all the tiny little details and Easter eggs they hid in this trailer. If you like these videos, please go down to the comments and let me know that you like these videos because I have a lot more theories for season four that I wanna talk about and more videos that I wanna make. So don't forget to turn post notifications on so you don't miss the next video. Now, episode one is the Hellfire Club, right? Not like the X-Men group Hellfire Club, but the D&D group Hellfire Club. This is the group of new kids that we see Dustin, Mike, and Lucas playing D&D with now that Will moved away and they're all in high school. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually named it after the X-Men Hellfire Club, but when the Stranger Things writers first posted the episode title to Twitter before we had any trailers, a lot of people were suspecting that this episode would also introduce the other test subjects Brenner was growing at Hawkins' lab. That sounds weird. Eleven's gifted siblings could also be considered their own Hellfire Club as each of them has metahuman-like powers. So as of now, we only know about six of the children. Of course, there's Eleven, and then there's Callie, number eight from season two. She has the illusion powers. And then the comics introduced us to four new characters. The first one is Francine, number six. She can actually see into the future. This ties in perfectly with the clocks and time travel theories for this season. Next is Ricky, number three. He's the oldest and can manipulate people's emotions. Then, personally, the ones that I would love to see more of is the twins, number nine, Jamie, and number 9.5. Marcy. Jamie has the ability to control and create heat, and Marcy is actually the only number to not have any powers, or at least yet we'll say. These kids could also be part of the first episode titled Hellfire Club. I know the obvious is the D&D group with all their new friends who won't be the best influences, but I think it would also make sense if it referred to the other numbers too. I really hope we get to see them this early on in the new season, but you know what doesn't make sense? Only 8% of you guys that watch the videos are subscribed. Shout out to that 8 you guys are the best and if you're part of the giant 90% that's not subscribed what are you doing if you enjoy the videos and you want to support the channel so I can keep making more videos all you got to do is subscribe doesn't cost anything but it helps me out a lot I hope to at least see you guys in the next video because I've got some more Stranger Things ones coming soon but more on that later episode 2 is Vecna's curse this will be the episode with the Creel murders it might not be the whole story but I'm sure this is where they'll introduce the Creels for the first time as well as the new upside down threat that they'll compare to Vecna. Vecna is a dead creature who was once a human wizard in the D&D universe who could wander the entire multiverse. This obviously referring to the Upside Down as well as the Earth universe that the kids live in. Vecna became an extremely powerful wizard and eventually started to fear their own mortality.
ability. So the demon lord Orcus taught Vecna how to prevent himself from dying and achieving undeath, and eventually became one of the most powerful undead. One day his right hand man turned on him and cut off his left hand and gouged out his left eyeball before banishing him from the realm and ultimately dying. His left eye and his hand were the only physical remnants of his body as his spirit moved on. Later he formed a cult and tried to help him become a demigod and ultimately failed and was thwarted by adventurers, but even after Vecna went on as a spirit, he was still described as missing his left eye and his left hand. Coincidentally, recently in an interview, Robert England, the actor that played Victor Creel in season 4, casually dropped the biggest spoiler on accident without even batting an eye, where he goes on to say that his character will eventually gouge his eyes out and become blind. And I recently did uh, Stranger Things, I've and uh, I'm blind in it. I gouged out my eyes and I'm blind. Spoiler alert. And in the last trailer, if you look closely at the dead rabbit that his daughter finds on the lawn, you will see that his left eye is gouged out. So what if Vecna is possessing things that come around its territory in the Creel house and possesses them, making them go insane and in Victor's case, kill his family before gouging their own eyes out because Vecna still has no left eye. That's insane. There's so much to this theory that I'm looking forward to. We can only hope that Vecna doesn't possess any of the kids in the gang to do the same while they're investigating the murders. Episode 3, The Monster and the Superhero. Now, I don't know if you remember, but season 2, when everyone is about to be eaten by Demogorgons in the finale, Joyce's boyfriend Bob decides to sacrifice himself so that everyone can escape. And right before he leaves, he says this. Remember Bob, newbie. Superhero. So obviously our first thought is, what does this have to do with Bob? Will it be a tribute? Are they going to find him in the Upside Down? Do they ever really even kill anybody in this show? Unfortunately, I don't think Bob is still alive. If he is, I would be very impressed and intrigued to see how they explain that. Instead, I almost think it could refer to the current superhero, the last man to give his life so that everyone could survive, just like Bob. Hopper did this at the end of season 3 and got shipped off to Russia where we were introduced to another monster, a new type of white demogorgon. So just maybe this is introducing us to Hopper in Russia and possibly his first encounter with the new white demogorgon. Next is episode 4, Dear Billy. Sheesh, more dead people who aren't really dead. Could you imagine? No, but on the real, I think this episode is going to look at Max and how she's coping with losing her brother. Yeah, he was a jerk for two seasons, but they Darth Vadered him so good at the end. L touched his heart and he fought off the mind flare from within and stood up for himself in the game to save L and give them enough time to defeat the monster, saving the world. He was another hero that left us with tears in our eyes when he died. I also think that they're going to go looking into Billy's connection with the mind flare and how he was able to be a host for something in the Upside Down. Maybe they'll try to reverse engineer it so they can operate in the Upside Down or something. Either way, I'm bringing tissues and expecting this to be an emotional roller coaster. Next is episode five, The Nina Project. Now, this was actually teased in the Brenner teaser with all the new numbers. I had to call my French friend to help me with the pronunciation but the song in this trailer is Quand le bien aime reviendra. which translates to when my sweetheart returns to me it's from this play Nina. And it's about a girl named Nina who is in love with this man that her father the Count doesn't approve of. So this man she loves fights his rival in a duel and after Nina believes that he's been killed. And so she goes mad, literally forgetting what happened in this traumatic incident with a diagnosis of psychogenic amnesia. And she only regains her memory when her loved one reappears unharmed and her father finally lets her marry him. This is literally a song about a young woman who loses her memory in a forced amnesia. This is literally Eleven with her powers. Are you kidding me? I just wonder how they find this stuff that they can draw these lines between. It would be really crazy if Eleven didn't get her powers back and remember how to use them until she learned that Hopper was alive. The song literally translates to When My Sweetheart Returns to Me, in reference to Hopper returning to Elle, or maybe even a reference of Dr. Brenner's sweetheart, Eleven, returning to him. I don't know if you remember this, but they also did this with the Big Ben clock chimes in the first season 4 teaser. The song that the notes of the clock chime are from is called My Redeemer Liveth, as in Hopper is still alive. Such a crazy theory. It just amazes me that they can figure this stuff out. But I think this is the episode where, like I'm saying, Hopper returns home. 
Episode six is called The Dive. I know, I know, I'm excited for it too. That one split second of footage that we got of Steve underwater is all we know about this. That being said, we can also assume that it has something to do with the Creel murders and the upside down rift that Vecna is chilling at in the Creel house with the grandfather clock. I feel like he's going underwater to retrieve something. I can't imagine why else he'd be going on a dive, but whatever is coming up behind him that makes him turn with dread in his eyes, better not lay a finger on him. We go underwater one time, guys. You better not kill off our favorite character. No, I don't think they'll kill him, but still, I'm gonna be on the edge of my seat for this one. Number seven is one of the ones I might be looking forward to most the massacre at Hawkins. This will no doubt be the massacre that took place before season one on the night of Eleven's escape. Originally, I was thinking this might be another rogue number that kills everyone off and flees just because if they show Eleven cracking everyone's necks, it might paint her as too much of a bad guy. But come to think of it, they've used Eleven in the past to kill off tons of bad guys at Hawkins Labs, and it was fine. They were the bad guys holding her prisoner. So it could be Eleven going rogue and escaping. It'd be pretty cool to see a joint effort between Eleven and another number, or a few of the other kids. I've been really wanting to see them team up this season, so this could just be such an epic episode, but this will no doubt take place as a flashback right before season one starts. Now, number eight following that episode will be titled Papa. This will most likely be following up on Brenner in the present and explaining what he's been up to since we last saw him in season one when they faked his death. What? He's not dead? Nope. The Duffer brothers confirmed he was still alive and kicking and even that scientist mentioned it in season two when they were running around looking for a cup of revenge. I can help you find him. Find who? Brenner! I can take you to him. He is alive. Super excited to see what Brenner's been up to these last two years. I'm curious what his relationship with the Russians is, as well as if he still has any of the other test subjects. And for the finale this year, we have the somewhat sus title of just The Piggyback. Now, I have no idea what this will actually be. Possibly Vecna, since it possesses everyone and piggybacks on them as a host. Maybe Eleven will give a metaphorical piggyback to another test subject so that they can team up to defeat the final monster, piggybacking off each other's powers. Who knows? Go tell me in the comments what you think this one will be. Honestly, I think this is for sure one of the decoy titles. They did this in season two as well as season three. It's just way too vague and it would be weird if they weren't being protective and shielding us from spoilers with the finale's title. I also think episode six is a little sus, just the dive. It's kind of generic, honestly. This will probably change to something closer to the key that they're retrieving on this dive that's so important. The next one that is in question might be the monster and the superhero. I'm just so thrown off by this one, I don't know what to expect. But for the most part, all the others seem pretty on point. I was actually surprised that they released Vecna's curse so soon. I would have thought that they'd release a decoy called Hawkins Curse or something instead of revealing the new monster so soon. But please let me know if you like this video and if I should make more. Until then, go watch this other Stranger Things video for more spoilers and hidden secrets. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you in the comments. Peace.